Q Crew, what's going on? Happy New Year to each and every one of you. Welcome back. I am Suave Q, aka the Q Pill, and you guys are tuned in for another dosage of Q Pill. And in this dose right here, we're going to be reacting to a, a panel of feminists that was on the Vice YouTube channel. Pro feminists, anti feminists. They sat down and had a conversation about women's rights, feminism, trans rights, the Me Too movement, and abortion, from what I understand. Now, I couldn't help myself as somebody who knows that feminism is a scam. I had to react to it. Now, I have no idea what these women are going to say. I have no idea how they're going to rationalize their positions. It's just going to be an impromptu reaction as we go along. It's going to be pretty long, so you guys might want to kick back, relax, and put in your headphones. Uh, I'm going to break it down. I'm going to break it down. But as I said, it's a new year, new beginnings. I got new goals for my YouTube channel, new objectives, and it starts with you guys already doing what you need to do you know the drill hit that like share and subscribe button and turn on your notifications and make sure y'all share my content with your family your friends your colleagues your peers so that they can get a dose of the q-pill as well let's get a dose of this shit <music> Not going to give a whole bunch of opening statements. We're just going to react to the video because, as I said, this video is going to be pretty long. And, you know, I'm going to pause it. There's going to be a lot of times where I pause it based on what these women say. Just for warning you guys now, if they say some bullshit or something outlandish or asinine or something that's inaccurate or make a misattribution error, I'm going to call it out. And I'm going to break down and give my analysis of what the reality of the situation may be pertaining to the uh, aforementioned um, topics regarding this video so without further ado man let's go ahead react to it see what we got going on with these women is feminism still alive is the question that they've asked and if you ask me it is still alive pointlessly but it's still alive Welcome, everybody. I'm Liz Landers. I'm Vice News' chief political correspondent, and we are here today to talk about some of the biggest issues dividing women across the country. In other words, we're here to talk about feminism. First, I just want to say we know we can't represent everybody's views, but we did try our best to bring together a diverse group of women today. All right. Diversity and inclusion. Look at that. We have what appears to be the woman from Monsters, Inc., the big green woman. In today's polarized world, is feminism dead? You guys saw your hand. I think that depends on the definition of feminism. Oh, okay. We have the the non-binary, I guess that's what she identifies as, pronouns is they, them, if I have to guess. Um, I see Pearl sitting there. We have an attractive young woman down there in the right corner. Looks to be of, you know, early 40s, maybe late 30s. And, of course, we have some black women. Pretty diverse panel. As, as they want it we don't want any we don't want to push any certain narratives about white supremacy or you know what i mean we don't want to propagate that stuff purport that stuff with this kind of with this kind of information that they're about to share with us I want to make sure they're represented it's diverse and includes people from all backgrounds ethnicities demographics races cultures I strongly think that feminism is more of an action than an identity. I would say it's uplifting all women, in which case it's very alive. At the same time, um, if we do follow that definition, feminism has splintered off into so many different areas that you can look at um, people like Sheryl Sandberg who say you should just get another nanny if you feel oppressed. And if we're talking <laughs> about that kind of feminism, um, yeah, it's pretty dead. Yeah, I mean... As long as the human race exists, feminism, feminism will never be dead. It's something that we're really going to have to strive and work work towards um, to make sure that there's equality. So feminism is not dead. I don't know that it can die. As long as there's power and oppression, there will be people fighting for equity. And um, until that somehow goes away, feminism is alive and well. Okay, here we go. Here's one we're going to watch. She's going to be one of the people that we watch to see what she says because she's already under the impression that there is uh, power and oppression here in the West when it comes to women's rights, I would assume. Now, she'd be correct if we were talking about the Middle East, but I don't see much power and oppression in the context of women being oppressed and men 
holding all the power, I the patriarchy. I, I don't know. So she's she's one that's probably going to make some interesting talking points, probably very emotional, um, rationalized positions on her perceptions of what feminism is. So let's just keep an eye out for this woman right here. Wow. I think feminism um, isn't actually about equality. It's about equality when it benefits us. I think feminism is really about women wanting special privileges and treatment at the expense of men often. And I think... Look, see, there go... I told y'all, there she go. There go the smile. She, she, she's, already, she's already experiencing some cognitive dissonance with Pearl. With Pearl's answer. And I know there is a lot of you who are Pearl fans. I am not a fan of Pearl. I do not watch Pearl. So just be mindful of that. I am an objective guy. I keep it 100. Regardless of who's speaking. I, I, I you know, wherever there's validity in effect, I agree. And wherever there is contrary evidence for what someone says that they may think or perceive to be a fact, I will disagree. That goes for this woman right here as well. I think it's alive and well, sadly. I think feminism is also alive and well. Um, there are different kinds of feminism, right? Like, that is obvious. Um, and I, for me, as, as a womanist, as a black feminist, right, as someone who's really thinking about human rights, dignity, right, equity, right, as long as that's not, that need isn't met, we're still going to keep fighting. I'd say it's alive and well. I'd say that it's also very nuanced, and I think what it looks like is going to differ depending on where you are in the world. For me, I just see it as a lens, which isn't necessarily antagonistic or uh, protagonistic. It's just... Y'all cannot tell me that is not the green woman from Monsters, Inc. Pixar's Monsters, Inc. The green woman that works at the counter. Y'all can't tell me that's not her in human form. That's her. A useful tool. Similar to what Pearl just said, I find that a lot of feminist ideology and thought today feels more of like a supremacist movement rather than something that is supposed to be advancing the goals of equality. I don't think that we can really term what's going on as feminism because it looks so different to, I think, the earlier feminist movements. So in that way, I would say it's taken its last breaths of life. It's dying. Yeah, I definitely think um, it's getting more and more radicalized. For sure. So it's it's definitely still alive. I think I'll preface and say that I don't know so much about modern Western feminism. And there might be a lot of terms that I don't know, like political jargon and stuff. But I believe in the advancement of women, whoever considers themselves a woman. Uh, I think there's a deficiency in society. So it's deeply rooted that um, feminism has always existed. I think America's a little obsessed with themselves and it's like always feminism is rooted in America <laughs> and like, oh, white women started it. And it's kind of offensive because for thousands of years, women have been dying for their rights. I think as a black woman specifically, uh, when you talk about feminism, yeah, the mainstream first thing you think about is a certain type of feminism that tends to exclude still, even today, even with intersectional fem feminism, exclude um, African-American women. And it's always kind of done that. And also like, upper middle class white women has predominantly been the face of what we quote unquote consider feminism. I think feminism is attempting to say, OK, the first thing we agree on is that there are barriers and friction to what I need and what I want based on the fact that I'm a woman. What it ignores is that and what privilege is, is that you may not have to think that being a woman and being a black woman and being a black woman who has a disability, for example, impacts you further. You have more barriers. You have more friction. You are less able to get what you want. You're undervalued in a way that's like. OK, well, you know, that's life. That's what I mean by equity and that we're able to, without friction, all get the same needs met. Yeah. Um, yeah. First things first, we all know there's no such thing as a quality of outcome between groups. There are a myriad of variables that results in what black women experience, what white women experience, what Asian women experience. But at the end of the day, they're all human beings. The variables, the first variable, first and foremost, is personal choice. They always seem to forget this. We're so set on blaming the external factors rather than looking at the choices that we make personally and looking at the er what may be an error in our interpretation of our experience. Because that's what a lot of people don't understand. You have black women who attribute 
things to their race. They attribute phenomena to their race, to them being black, when in reality, there are other more legit and substantiated reasons for why they're experiencing what they're experiencing. And it has very little to do. It has very little correlation with the fact that they're black. Now you can make arguments for, you know, back in the 1900s, or 1800s, you can go, you can make arguments for slavery, but in today's economy, in today's America, there's very little correlation to any of those things that none of us were alive to experience. And as I said, they often forget that, but you hear them making that argument, or at least she's making the case here. And then the woman, the black woman before her, you know, when she made it about race and comparing who's been the face of feminism, well, white women have been the face of feminism because most of the men who were working in own corporations, they were white men and their wives were white. So that's natural. You would see the same thing in a predominantly black demographic. If black people were the majority demographic here in America, it would look the exact same way. Yep. Yeah. See, I disagree with that. I think life is easier if you're a girl. Um, actually, yeah, I think, I think there's a lot advantage. of benefits um, <laughs> that men don't have. I'm, I'm not going to speak anything to race. I'm just talking about gender specifically. It's usually like an excuse. She's right. I agree with that. There's a lot of benefits. There's a lot of benefits to being a woman, such as being able to go on social media and take a half naked pic and rack up thousands of followers, likes and DMs from men who are willing to send you cash apps that you don't know. And you're able to live off of everyone else's donation simply because you're attractive. And even the moderately attractive or average looking women can experience this because there are going to be men who are less attractive than them who are willing to do the same thing that men will do for the most attractive women. We don't talk about that. The fact that women's value lies in their beauty, lies in how good they look and the amount of resources that they can acquire based on that alone makes their lives significantly easier than it does a man who is otherwise invisible if he doesn't have money, status, power and can't acquire resources. Use. Like, honestly, I think as a girl, you have equal opportunity in the world. I think there's benefits. Like, for example, we have quotas for women in specific jobs that are given to us that aren't given to men. Not the world. This is a statement that people often, they often forget. It's not the world in Western civilization. Yes, not the world. There are other societies where women don't have the same degree of freedom and liberation that we have in Western civilization, in Western culture, in America, in the UK, in Australia, in New Zealand. Yes, women have these same rights. Not in places such as the Middle East. Uh, you can make an argument for, you know, certain parts of Asia as well. But in Western culture, this is this applies. So, yeah, I would I would say it's easier being a girl. Just from the viewpoint over here, though, it seems there's a lot of privilege, pretty privilege in what you're saying and mm. that you're white and you present. Do you think I'm pretty? Thank you. I think that you present in a way that beauty standards have accepted. And so they call me ugly on the Internet all the time. See, and what did I just say? What did I just say? So she brings up pretty privilege, but. There are always going to be men who are willing to give something to even average looking women. I mean, you look at OKCupid.com, the data, even the average looking women still received five messages, five messages a week from men. Whereas the top 10 percent of women received up to 25 messages a week from men. So even average looking women will still receive the interest. They'll still garner the interest of men. And there's no reason to believe that that interest can extrapolate into money. That can't be, that can't be shown in the form of money. It absolutely can. All they got to do is put, here's my cash app and, and men will, and men will fund them. Now I don't know about this woman in his wheelchair who's handicapped and she references Pearl's pretty privilege. Pearl is not super attractive to me. Pearl is an average looking woman by objective metrics but they, they be roasting me daily i swear to god i don't mean to say i think you're gorge i just mean that there are a certain value that we give to certain bodies to i mean let's that. also dig into why these quotas exist and why these um what you're calling because privileges you want special exist. treatment um no but it's because there have historically and presently in most jobs been fewer women and because of sexism. How is it sexism when we have no barriers today? So we can we Who can pick who no we want barriers? to pick. doesn't have barriers? Women don't, don't have barriers? Um, women, yeah. What, what's we stopping have no you? You barriers. can do whatever you want. Uh, I can you? or you can. What's stopping you? As a woman, as a woman. As a woman. As a... <laughs> she says, I can or you can. Aren't you both women? You're both women. 
Now, she may be an ableist because she's not disabled, but you two can do whatever you want. You can choose the career path that you want. Why do they act like this is a complex? This is a complex phenomenon. It's not. You can get up. You can decide to go to school. The woman in a wheelchair can decide she wants to get an engineering degree, although I don't know exactly how that's going to work for her in her physical condition, but she can up and decide that she wants to get an engineering degree or be a tech woman or whatever else she wants to be. That's literally what it comes down to, the decision to make your own choices. We're going to sit here and pretend that women in the West don't have the decision. They don't have the freedom. They're not liberated enough to make their own career choices, decide what they want to do, what they want to pursue, the degrees they want to have, we're going to sit here and pretend that this is not the case. The fact that she even says I can or you can, she just she just basically refuted her own argument. She basically just disproved her own argument because Pearl's still a woman. So even if Pearl can and she can't, Pearl still represents women. And if this applies to women in general, then Pearl wouldn't be an exception, especially because she's an average looking woman as well. She wouldn't be an exception. Woman, See, woman. That ignores a lot that I'm a woman with a disability. So mm -hmm. there's a lot stopping me that you mm -hmm. don't have to think about. And what I just say, I just say her physical condition. I said, I just said she can make a case for her physical condition, but that's not society's fault. We don't know why she's in the condition. We don't know what led to this disability, but that still is not society's fault. That goes for men, too. A man sitting in this wheelchair the same way with the same condition that she has would be subject to the same barricades that she's subject to. Not because she's a woman. It has to do with disability. Disability is the significant factor. Not being female. Whatever, whatever barricade she faces, whatever barrier she faces... Men in her in her condition would face the same exact ones. So you're speaking for yourself. You're speaking as, a, as an able-bodied able -bodied woman. woman. There you go. They're going to ableist argument. They're going to ableist. What I tell you. Barriers if you're disabled, I'm sure. Like I'm, I'm not. I'm not. I'm not. I'm talking about as a woman. So you're just going to. Way to make that distinction, Pearl. I would agree. Wait. What? Way to make that distinction, Pearl. Same thing I just said. She's making she's making an argument as an ableist, not as a woman. And Pearl's making an argument as a woman. Way to way to draw that distinction, Pearl. Because I don't know the human mind is just y'all y'all have no idea how much it irks me how irrational the human mind is. How the human mind will frame their argument to whatever they want it to mean, rationalize it, and then proceed as if they just stated a fact that's not observable like we can see that this is not the case we can see that this is attributed to this factor not the fact that that you're trying to attribute it to so this is the type of misattribution errors that i'll be talking about she's trying to attribute her struggles to the fact that she's a woman over the fact that she's disabled when in reality the fact that she's disabled trumps the fact that she's a woman because if she was a woman she would be able to do the same exact things that pearl is it can do due to her ableism going to ignore the pay gap um, regulation over our bodies the pay gap you're just going to ignore the pay gap what pay gap what what pay gap the fact that i just stated women have the right to choose whatever career path they want they have the right to choose whatever occupation that they want when left up to their own vices their own decision making their own personal choices what do women choose women choose professions that help people women do not choose professions that build society literally they don't they you don't see women on the side of the road uh, uh, reconstructing the road with construction workers you rarely see women working on buildings women are not the architects women are not technologists they're not the tech guys they're not in medicine medical research to the degree that men are they're not in biology and 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 chemistry and math and they aren't mathematicians they aren't choosing these careers that actually help advance the world technologically innovatively and we see that so the fact that they don't choose to do that is why there is a quote unquote pay gap we love saying oh you know women make uh, x amount of cents for every dollar that a man makes yeah, in general, when you're looking at all the occupations that there are under one umbrella, but when you actually break it down and we go into the individual career choices and the individual occupations, 
those disparities dissipate. Let's talk there's, about there's it. a pay gap, but it's because women don't want to do the hardest industries. I don't think it's that simple. I think, like, I think that's just an oversimplification. I think no, it, no, it's not an oversimplification. It's differently to men. It's actually men don't it's, give birth. Men don't have have to carry pregnancies. Men don't have to be the primary caregiver most of the time. Okay, so then it's rooted in biology. It's still not an oversimplification. It's actually the simplification of it. It's not an oversimplification. That's the actual explanation. You're right. Women can't do what men do because women have kids. Now, they can. They can put off having children, but then they have to modify other aspects of their life that have to adhere to whatever it is they're trying to do with their career. So it's give and take either way. So if you're going to choose to be a woman who wants to pursue her career and put family on the back burner, then you very well are risking not being able to have a family in the future due to your biological clock. Women also don't hold jobs for as long as men do. They often will stop and start. They'll go back into work. They'll take time off. That's personal choice. They'll stop and start. They'll take time off. This is literally what women choose. They choose to do this. This is what they choose. That has nothing to do with the patriarchy. That's not, that's not a man's fault. If my woman decides she doesn't want to work a job anymore, that ain't got shit to do with me. I didn't tell you to quit. I, I didn't tell you to quit. Personal choice. Once again, it's not an oversimplification. It's quite simple. They'll take part-time jobs. The way that men work and women work are astronomically different. And to try to say that they're comparable is, is where this issue comes from. They're not comparable. Two things. First of all, um, let's dig into why they think that. Uh... Okay, so if it's not comparable, then you shouldn't be complaining about a wage gap. Shouldn't be complaining about a wage gap. The wage gap exists because there are natural biological differences between men and women. Spontaneous interest, career choice. Women give birth, men don't. Um, they should take these jobs, which is society, societal sexism. And then also, um, actually, all I mean, Department of Labor, all statistics, at least speaking in the U.S., um, have found that when compared for the same jobs, there still is a pay gap, particularly when it pertains to race. Because 60% of women have never asked for a raise. So how can you complain about your pay if why, you don't why ask? Are they, because, why are they not asking? Wait, what happens because, when women because, ask for a raise? So, sorry, I just, sure, I've, been, yes. I've been wanting to say something, but I want to be respectful. Of, I don't, don't want to interrupt yeah. people, and I want to let them finish their thoughts. Just, Jump in, just but you know, it's just, uh, it is a very privileged label, right? To be able to say that you're feminist, right? right? And I say that because I come from a working class background of Dominican immigrant parents. My mother would not necessarily identify as a feminist. I look to my mother and I do think of her as a feminist. A lot of my ideas and my empowerment comes from seeing her like survive and put food on the table when i'm thinking about feminism i'm always thinking about who's not part of the conversation what are the barriers how do we think about equity how we think about self-empowerment and agents oh that's easy you know who's not part of the conversation the women that don't give a shit the women who have husbands and the women who aren't complaining about their lives the women who don't care those are the women who are not a part of the conversation the women who are realists the women who are actually doing productive things with their lives that adhere to female roles. They're not activists. They're not out trying to push certain narratives or propagate certain ideas of sexism, et cetera, et cetera. They don't give a shit. Those are the women who are not included. The women who don't want to be, who don't care to be. And interestingly enough, those are probably the women who make the best wives and having a voice, right, and having choice, and thinking about our basic human rights, education, access to health, uh, homes, like having bread, having food, and those things are very important, right, and they're at the crux, right, about of what a lot of us here know that we need. It's like there are the barriers. I don't think there's anybody on this panel who doesn't have a home, who doesn't have bread, who doesn't have water, who doesn't have a job. I could be wrong. I could not know what the hell I'm talking about, but I'm almost certain that there's nobody on this panel who is experiencing that level of hardship. Who's going to leave out of here and go lay on the street under a bridge.
with no one who's willing to help them. I'm almost certain that none of these women on this panel are experiencing that. I'm almost certain that 90% of women in America don't experience that because they have the government to fall back on too. The government is there to help. Can't say the same for men. Most of the homeless people you see on the street are men. Can't say the same for them. But we can say it for women. You rarely see a homeless woman. And the women who are impoverished, it's because they chose to have kids out of wedlock most of the time, a large majority of the time. And they still get government assistance. Now, it's a matter of how financially responsible they are and what they choose to spend their money on that you can make a case for. But at the end of the day, that's still their choice. We're not going to create these phantom problems. See, and this, this is what these feminists do. They create phantom problems. They, they want so... They want so much to be going through some type of difficult time that they're willing to create it and rationalize it any way they can that will not only convince themselves that this is the case, but then try to convince everybody else that their perceptions of what the realities are are actually the realities and not just perceptions. Right, that we constantly ignore that are very much systemic and microaggressive, right? We see them and experience them every like day. Like what in the U.S.? So like what? What would you like to know an example of? I, I know you said you. No, 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 not what would you like to? She just, you just, she literally just set the premise. Then she talk about what would you like to know an example of? She literally just said it's systemic. We experience it every day. And then Pearl says like what? And she says what would you like to know an example of? What the fuck you just said? You literally just described, you literally just laid the premise down of what I want to know an example of. What do you mean, what example do I want to know? You said it. You made the premise. This is why women are poor debaters. Women are shitty debaters. This is why. That, that there is, like, barriers. I want to know what barriers in the U.S. today as a woman. Well, as a woman or as a woman of color? Let's be specific. To as a woman. See, moving the goalposts, moving the goal at the woman or as a woman of color. Y'all have the same experiences. They, we are, are we not? Whoa, hold up. Is this panel not diverse because they're all women and they all are, are, are supposed to be experiencing whatever it is that they're experiencing that pertains to feminism? There's supposed to be some commonalities amongst their experiences with the patriarchy and being oppressed and not having the same rights as men, not having the same access to education and health care and career choices. They're all up here because they're all supposed to be able to relate. Now you're going to tell me that there's in-group heterogeneity amongst these women? Because that's, that's what they're telling me. They're telling me, oh, now their experiences are unique based on the complexion of their skin when y'all are all up here in the first place because y'all are all women. That's what women do when you debate them. They move the goalposts as a woman or as a woman of color. As a woman, because that's what we all are. We're all women. If we experience shit as women, then we should all be able to relate to those experiences because... The woman is the common denominator. We're, we're experiencing these because we're women, not because you're a woman of a particular ethnic background. And we don't, woman. well, no, I can't answer as a woman. I just, just feel like your woman, question is right? kind of. She can't answer as a woman. And what the hell is she doing up here on the panel? You see women, this is, this is exactly why I wanted to react to this guys, because I knew what it exi I knew it would exemplify how irrational women are. I knew it would exemplify that women can make statements. And I've always said it. Women can make general statements, but women cannot provide you with specificity when called upon. When you need a woman to give you an example of whatever it is that she's making a statement about, she cannot provide you with that example. I've argued and debated with thousands of women. I can't remember one who could provide me with an actual example when it comes down to it specifically of what it is that they're trying to say occurs. Women are poor at specificity. And the fact that we can just randomly see it because I randomly chose to react to this video and she's demonstrating that right now is evidence. Hostile when you're like, 
I don't, I, there are no barriers to what I want. Congratulations. That means you have a privilege where you're not facing any friction and that's I mean, showing. And I feel like it's I think like, does it, does it mean that she has no barriers and, 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 or is it just evidence that maybe these phantom barriers are just not as prevalent as these women would like them to be or as they claim they are? I think as an American, you're very privileged. Oh, like, I mean, I'm right. not ignoring that. Yeah, or right. like a so. basic level of what, I mean, the feminist movement is when it comes to just being born a woman, right? Physically, pound for pound, we are born as women and we have less lean muscle mass than men. So there are issues of violence and assault and stuff like that and so therefore there are policies there are things to help women physically like for example i believe being able to carry a firearm and being able to use that safely to defend yourself against men who are born naturally with more muscle mass than a woman good argument okay this is going to sound a little nuts but the fastest and easiest way i don't give a damn about no nuts we don't want to hear nothing about no nuts I keep hearing the term equity. What would in a world that, that has equity look like? Like, would it be would it be fifty percent of everyone in the same jobs? Would it be like prison fifty percent? That's equality. Fifty percent. So, yeah, so, so what does equity look like? So equity is generally described as a state of fairness because historically a lot of people have been arguing for equality. But mm. what does that give us? Um, like, uh, like 05 of the one percent being woman. This doesn't really do anything for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. um, and so people have talked about equity instead, which is um, instead of sameness, it's fairness. Mm -hmm. And this would mean that we remove systemic barriers mm -hmm. to um, to engage in society. Such as what? Not just for women, but also for so, everyone. So which barriers? Okay, Those barriers so, that you don't believe in. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't, I don't. Is any one of these women going to provide her with an example of the barrier? The first woman said, I cannot tell you. And then she says the barriers that you believe that you don't believe in. Okay, what are those barriers? Can you break it down for me? Can you explain it to me? This is why I can't have conversations with women, especially about triggering topics, because I'll get nowhere. I'll get nowhere. I have these kind of arguments with women that I date. Not that they actually care, but I'm somebody who likes to cognitively spar. So I, I mess with a lot of the women that I date because I'm somebody who's vocal about this kind of stuff. And when we're watching movies and I point, I, I'll point out examples to the women that I date about why I think something is BS or why I don't agree with it or what's an example of something that I talk about. And they'll sometimes give me a little pushback or ask some questions and it'll often look like this. Their, their responses will often be like this when I ask them questions. So once again, that's over 2 who has failed to answer Pearl's question about the barriers. Over 2 you to have a bunch of ramps in your life it doesn't do shit i need those ramps right can we stick to male versus that's not a f that's not an anti f <laughs> that's not a, f a feminist issue that has to do with the fact that you're physically disabled why does she keep attributing why does she keep attributing her disability to the fact that she's a woman they're not the same issue they don't they don't intersect they, that those are two completely separate issues. Is she gonna keep doing this? Is she going? Is she gonna keep using her 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 disable her disability as, as an excuse? Is she gonna keep attributing the problems that she experienced to a woman when it's actually the fact that she's disabled? Do you guys get what I'm saying? She's attributing the issues that she experienced to the fact that she's a woman instead of her disability. When in reality, it's because she's disabled, not because she's a woman. Female, that's that's my question. So I, I'm thinking male versus female. But my so feminism like, so, includes so, ability, so, so, it includes so, so, race. My question is you for guys women, can, can talk women can versus talk. men. Like what what barriers do we need removed? Because that, that's my statement. I'm not I'm not stating anything else. I'm stating women versus men. It's very silly. Like, so it's so what barriers? <laughs> Yo, she, yo, y'all see her face? Look at her face. I gotta, I gotta look at her face. She just, <laughs> did I go back too far? That's my question. Look at her face. So I, I'm thinking male versus female. But my so feminism like, so, includes so, ability, so, so, it includes so, race. My question is, you guys can, can talk. Women can versus talk. men. Like what, what barriers do we need removed? Cause that, that's my statement. I'm not, I'm not stating anything else. Uh, uh. I'm stating women versus men. Look, 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 look at the way she blinking. She has no idea. She has no idea how to support 
the claims that she's making. She's stuck. I have a lot of women like this when we have debates too. And then they get angry. And then they start throwing insults. Ad hominem. It's very silly. Like so. It's so extreme. what bear? Why is I just want to the question. It's a fair silly. question. So, yes. Yeah, but I, I it's think, not a fair question. It's how is that not a fair question? Kind of proving the point of why what people, especially black women, other people who are anybody who's not white, why we hear feminism and we don't want that label because it means. I'm just gonna say it means that. Like it means that you're you've already gone to a pinnacle of whatever you think your happiness needs or whatever your survivalist needs are when there are people on lower end who are trying to survive who are trying to get to a point of what should be normal um based on what other people have it sort of sounds like you're saying feminism is not always inclusive then right it's most of the time it's not inclusive it it, is more times than not it's it's not so and within the just Feminism space, again, they're obviously the very basic is male versus female versus, you know, but unfortunately, we've only had one subset of women be the face and voice and the academics and research and everything to be able. Why is she shaking her head? No. Why, why is the disabled woman shaking her head? No, she's had ample opportunities to explain and support her claims. She has failed every time, but she's still shaking her head. No. Why is it so difficult for women to provide you with specificity, evidence that we can observe that makes sense? And then when they fail to provide you with that evidence, you stand on your argument. They get upset. I'm open and receptive if you can provide evidence and the evidence is sufficient. You have to do your part and explain it. I'm not supposed to just accept what you say because you think that is true, but you can't explain to me how it's true where it's true depending upon what by what metric is it true well to say well that's the standard we need to be in when there are other people who are still trying to get to some type of normalcy and just living what is the biggest issue then that feminism faces i think it's the mindset women taking like the agency women taking initiative i think it's mindset holding them back a lot because if you want to be in a competitive world and compete you have to have the right mindset and i think a lot of people blame their lack of confidence or what society tells them um, for the reason they they're not achieving what they need to achieve when that's not the case you have to have the mindset of achieving because the men who built the world had the mindset of building it. So the women who want to engage and build that further, they need to have that same mindset. I don't think. That's what the hell I'm talking about. You go, girl. She explained that shit. You go, girl. You go, girl. Stop having a victim mindset. That's what these women have, a victim mindset. You can't have a victim mindset. Achievers don't have victim mindsets. Everybody faces obstacles. Everybody has weaknesses. Everybody has flaws. Everybody has shortcomings. No one is perfect. Everyone has to deal with obstacles and barriers, both men and women. To say that you're dealing with it because you're a woman is disingenuous. You're not paying attention. You need to look at your personal choices. You need to look at your goals and objectives. You need to understand what steps you have to take to reach those goals and objectives. You have to implement a plan. And sitting around complaining that you can't because you're a woman is absolutely insane. It's absurd. It's outlandish. It's asinine. It's egregious. It's blasphemous. We do. I don't. I think it's like assuming that we all want to be capitalist babies. Right. I think that men are not well adjusted in the society, <laughs> and women are not yeah. trying to re-embody what they have built for us. Mm. I think that like. Wow. So here we go with the virtue signaling. So she uses virtue signaling. She thinks that men are the ones who did it wrong and that women somehow have a better way of doing it or they're not trying to emulate the way that men did it. But the way that men did it are working for us. The reason that they're on this panel looking the way that they do with everything that they have, a man created that. Doesn't matter the fact that he might have scammed some people. Doesn't matter that he might have taken over some territory. None of that matters because that's not what you think about when you go buy the stuff. Hence, that's why you end up buying the shit that you buy. 
These women don't these women don't say no, I'm not purchasing that because this came from a white man conquering. This came from a white man who graped. <clears throat> this came from a white man who destroyed, who pillaged. This, this they're not doing that. Everything they have, a man built it. The platform that they're on, a man built it. That building that they're in, a man built it. Those chairs that they're sitting in, the wheelchair that that disabled woman is in, a man built that shit. Why wouldn't you want to emulate that? i tell you why, because for one, y'all don't have the hand strength to do it. Y'all don't have the grip strength to do it. You can't, be, you can barely open pickle jars. Talking about uh, the, the, the men did it. We're not trying to emulate the way men did it. You can't. You don't have the physical strength. You don't have the dexterity. You don't have the muscularity. You can't. They have a very, a very funny way of showing gratitude to the leisures and the luxuries that men have provided because of the male mind. Because of the problems that existed in our ancestral environments that men found uh, uh, solutions to. Food, shelter, water. Maximized it. To where you can buy $800 shirt. You can buy $1,000 pumps. The biggest consumer of designer shit is women. Men built that. Those ideas were in male minds. Why wouldn't you want to why wouldn't you want to emulate that? Why wouldn't you want to replicate those same plans that has resulted in the lifestyle that you enjoy or the lifestyle that you that you have a desire for? And want to enjoy. A man provided that. I hate when women act like men don't know what the fuck they're doing. I hate when women act like men aren't doing it the right way. And they somehow have an alternative method that's going to yield better results. When we have no evidence of that whatsoever anywhere. Because the world that exists as it is. Society that exists as it is. Humanity that exists as it is. Has been working for us. Since we discovered it, since we innovated it, since we modified it, since we shaped it into the ways that has allowed us to live comfortably. The birth control that all these women probably on, were on, have taken, men created that. And that's really, that's really one of the barriers that men broke for women. Birth control. But you won't hear them thank men for that. No, men created birth control. We're not trying to emulate that type of that type of shattering uh, uh, glass ceiling. We're not trying to emulate that. We don't want to sh uh, shatter the same barriers that men shattered in the ways in which they did it. We frown upon that. It's inhumane. If they don't get the hell out of there, <laughs> man, get the hell out of here with that bullshit. What we're forgetting is a very important detail, which is just like human respect and dignity. Yeah. See? And not asking people to prove what their experience is and to prove to you. Like, it is like such conservative thinking to say, like, I don't understand, explain it to me, versus just saying, I don't understand and let me respect what you are no, saying. Respect right? where we oh. I told you, this is what women do in relationships. They just want to be validated. Because they can't provide answers. They can't provide specificity for whatever it is that they're saying. And she just proved that. I don't understand. It's very conservative thinking that you have to ask me why I believe what I believe and ask me, can you provide an example? Because I want to know. I'm trying to figure out what the truth is. I'm trying to figure out if there's really a problem or if the problem exists in your head. Because if the problem only exists in your head and, and you're telling me that there's no actual tangible problem in reality, then how can I solve that? How can I fix what is an erroneous perception of something, but isn't the actual reality of that phenomenon in which you're saying it exists? How can I fix that? This is what women do in relationships too. They create phantom problems and they don't want a man to question the validity of that problem that they've created. Do y'all understand that? Women will create phantom problems and don't want you to question the validity of that problem. Ask them 
Well, can you tell me an example? What what was the last thing that I did that upset you? Can you tell me when I did this? You saying I always do this. When was the last time I did it? I don't know the last time, but I know you did. Well, how can you say that? You're not listening to what I'm saying. You're not respecting my feelings. You just God. You don't listen. That's what they do. That's what they do. They get upset at the fact that you ask for specificity, that you ask for an example instead of providing you with that example. Why? Because they know they can't provide you with that example. They haven't thought in depth enough about it. And the reason that they haven't thought in depth enough about it is because they've been indoctrinated. They've heard things and been exposed to information so often, so so repeatedly that they start to mimic it. They start to believe that this is the actual reality. That's how they become Paris. That's how they become. That's how it becomes an echo chamber. The illusory truth effect. These women have been indoctrinated to to believe certain things exist, but they never thought about how these things exist. They never put in the amount of critical thought that they should have put in, the amount of critical reasoning that they should have put in to ultimately come to the conclusion that yeah, this is actually this is actually real. I observe this all the time. This isn't just in somebody's head. This, this this isn't just a propagated narrative that people are putting out there to try to push us for uh, push to us for political gain. They don't think that deeply into it. They just accept the information that's told to them because it tells them that they're a victim. And then what is it easier to do? It's easier to be a victim than hold yourself accountable for the decisions that you make that result in outcomes that you find undesirable starting point i'm respecting that i'm really respecting that i'm saying that if you don't have the mindset you can even achieve it you're never going to even try so it's never like achieve what like what are we talking about because i feel like they are whatever y'all want to achieve what are they sitting here talking about achieve what what why are we sitting on this panel what is it that you're trying to achieve which tells me once again this is the problem with their thinking achieve what what it is that you're trying to achieve everybody in this room on this panel probably has different preferences preferences about what they want out of life so once again what are the steps that you must take to reach those goals and then you implement that plan achieve on every woman achieve whatever it is you're looking for equality equity but what i'm saying is women in the feminist space and a lot of these other spaces we don't acknowledge that we have to take the initiative we have to take the action we have to have the mindset we have to demand those things i don't understand how we're getting so off topic this is about feminism feminism today whereas everybody wants to make this about their individual oh i hear all the the multitude of other things that factor into my person great this is about feminism it's about womanhood i understand that all of you have your own individual experiences and, and the other things that feed into you as a person that's perfectly fine but this is where intersectionality falls off the planet and loses i would argue probably the vast majority of people including me i'm not even a feminist i don't give a crap about feminists arguing amongst themselves about who's the most victimized uh, but this is annoying to listen to I, I honestly just i don't understand anything anybody's even trying to get it i like what she's saying right now i like what she's saying she's sick of hearing the bs she's sick of it and i know all you watching this right now who are logical and rational is sick of it as well Let's continue. At, look, I just want to say that I don't think equity and this concept of... Damn, she sound like a dude. I thought that was a dude. Is this is this a woman? Is this an actual woman? Or is this is some fat dude who, who identifies as a woman that snuck his way up here? Did they have physicals? Did they check did they check their uh their genitalia before they brought them up here or did they just was he able to just get up on the stage I didn't, uh, on the premise of he identifies as a woman alone? Let me stop calling him he because this this got to be a woman. But I'm just saying just now before they put her on screen, hearing her talk, I thought that was a dude. I know I'm not the only one. I know y'all watching this thought this was a dude too. Competition can't coexist with each other. Equity is building more facilities for people who need them. It is recognizing that there are holes in the market and there's opportunities for women and feminine expansive people and meeting those opportunities. I, I think equity can can buoy the, the pre-existing system that we live in in a good way. And this is where we're going to get to um, what I think the real feminist arguments are, are based off of policy. And abortion is the biggest one. How many of you would identify as pro-choice? Let's do a show of hands for pro-choice. I feel like pro-choice is pro-life though. Yeah, yeah. Okay, and folks who identify as pro-life? 
Why do you identify as each? You've gone from legal, safe, rare to, yeah, I'm so proud, let me beatbox in front of the Planned Parenthood. Yeah, I got murder on my mind. I, the fact that, that it's celebrated that, that murdering uh, children, especially uh, in late-term pregnancies, is celebrated that people are so proud of themselves from mutilating a fetus is just, it, it, it blows my mind. And I don't think that you need yeah. to be pro-life to even take that stand. And you said late-term pregnancy. Yes. A lot of abortions do not happen I made the distinction. Well, I made the distinction right. specifically they, because right. lots of people still celebrate. There are people who when the laws were passed actually here in right. New York, they, they said, yes, great, yes, I love the right, fact but that... you need to ask about what are people celebrating, right? They're celebrating access. Well, we're not well, celebrating okay. killing kids. Like, that's, that's not what it why, is. Well, this is right? what I'm so, saying. Like, when here's it, the thing. When we're talking about access to reproductive health and to abortion rights, right, and to being pro-choice, listen, that's your body, you do you. The child if is you not decide, your body. As I go. A baby. It's so scary for me to hear people calling like guns the biggest equalizer for women, but taking their choices away from them at a policy level. Let me just state, and for those of you who have been following me for a long time, y'all know, I don't give a shit what a woman does with her body. I don't. I don't care if she gets an abortion or not. But there, but there, but there are two things that we need to address. The first one is that it is a baby. Okay, it's a baby. If it were not a baby, it wouldn't be double homicide if you kill a pregnant woman. Okay. People wouldn't celebrate when they first hear, I'm pregnant. Couples wouldn't celebrate when she pees on that stick and that, and that HGI, what is it, HGI, HGC, whatever the fuck it stand for. And I'm a scientist. I know what it's called, but I don't, I'm not, it, it ain't that, y'all get what I'm saying right now. When they pee on that stick and it says pregnant or them, them two sticks show up, them two lines show up. And you was and you was expecting that you wanted a baby, you're happy, because at that point you take all the precautions that you can. You you lay off the caffeine, you lay off the shellfish, you lay off the tuna, the the mercury, you lay off of everything that you know that could potentially harm the development of that quote unquote fetus, that zygote, that clump of cells, because it's a baby, and you compromise its development. And it's chance at life when you consume those things. So it's a baby. The second thing is, oh, it's murder. Because it's a baby. It's murder. Again, the double, double homicide. If somebody who kills a pregnant woman is charged with a double homicide, that means he just killed two human beings. He just killed two human beings. It's a baby. It's a baby. Um, Why is that? Having a gun is an equalizer. It is. Having rights is an equalizer. Yeah, that's Having a right. choice is right. an equalizer. Just like a gun right. And in this country, the policies control? that are pushed We're to doing... continue perpetuating patriarchy <laughs> and anti-women, um, like taking the autonomy away from women, it is heartbreaking to see women pushing that propaganda. No, I... It's all... I would ask her right now, what... what autonomy has been taken away from women and how is men competing amongst themselves for the attention of women anti-women i'm competing with this dude because i want you how's that anti-women how am i co how's it anti-women that men literally compete for time and affection and attention and re uh, reproductive uh rights to women amongst themselves intersexual competition how's that anti-women I'm competing with other men to provide and protect you, to provide for you and protect you, to have sex with you, start a family with you, to marry you. If anybody was unaware, that's why men do 99% of the shit that they do for the attention of women so that a woman will be sexually receptive to them and choose them as the guy that they want to inseminate and impregnate them. How's that anti-women? Women make some stupid-ass arguments. Women make some stupid-ass arguments. Brainwash. Like, you... Oh, it's brainwash because you don't think, agree with no, me. No, I, so I have been brainwashed. brainwashed. I have lived deeply institutionalized. Damn, I, I have lived under I, Islam. I'm not interested in any of that. Like, there's no, like, any for me. No, I'm not in Okay, so we see, where, we see where all her vitriol is coming from. She's lived in Islam. So, so, listen... 
Listen, she lived in Islam, so her, her, her vitriol is justified. But she has to understand that she's no longer living under those circumstances. She's no longer living under those, under those conditions. She's free now. That's what she's not getting. She's free now. This is not Islam. This is the West. This is America. Nah, but she valid in that. I mean, I can't imagine what she had to go through. You poor, poor thing. <laughs> Let's carry on. Interested in, like, living, thinking that, like, women are doing this really bad thing. Like, in my religion, is. abortion is actually allowed. If the woman needs it, she's allowed because, you know, it, it's very interesting how, like, fundamental america is like this is not this is nothing to very do very, with very like even deep, religion this is a very basic thinking. scientific yeah. human rights we're also talking about people not having access to abortion clinics where they're doing the things themselves and they die no. right we're also talking about women in the hospital who are pregnant who have chosen to stay with their pregnancy and have issues at hospitals and hospitals that are like oh no we don't do that listen for whatever reason, you don't need to explain it to anybody, but you know, me personally, I can't imagine I can't imagine how much a woman must not be attracted to a guy that she's pregnant by to not want to have his baby. I've never experienced that. Every girl that I've dated, every pregnancy scare that I've had, the woman wanted it. The woman wanted it. She wanted us to be one big happy family. She wanted a baby by me. I've had women tell me that if they were to get pregnant by me, they would keep it by me other dudes no but they would keep it by me now you got to be you 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 either that woman was really really drunk when she fucked you did not want to have your baby whatever the case i don't know but these women getting abortions that tells me that they must really really value their careers that much or they really just sleeping with men that they don't really find desirable that i i can't imagine that because that's kind of the point of sex. Women have an intrinsic desire to mate with a man that she would want to have his baby. That's kind of the whole point of copulation. That's kind of the whole point we engage in coitus is because a woman thinks you're attractive enough or thinks you have enough resources to provide for her and her offspring and she's willing to have a baby by you because of it. So for her to want to get an abortion after she finds out that she's pregnant by you, you fellas are down bad who had women who opted to get the abortion. Those of you who the women chose to get the abortions where you didn't make them get an abortion or you said if you don't get an abortion, I won't be in the baby's life. And so they just felt pressured, kind of coerced into getting an abortion because they know they wanted a family, but you didn't want it because you wasn't ready to take care of the baby for whatever, whatever circumstances, you know, resulted in you not wanting to have that baby. You down bad if she chose to get the abortion and you wanted it. I'm, I'm you down bad. She was cheating on you. She didn't really like you. She didn't love you. She wasn't attracted to you. That's unusual. I gotta, I gotta say that's unusual. A lot of times when we're talking about access to reproductive health, for me, I'm thinking about Black Indigenous people of color, particularly women and girls who are working class, who do not have even access to like proper sexual education. It's the oppressive state of saying, I will force you to have a child even against your own will, right? Especially when you're thinking about women and girls who... But there, but there are so many, there are so many uh, precautions women can take to avoid pregnancy. The first is obvious, abstinence, not having sex at all. I mean, men do vary chastity. We do var uh, value virgins. If a woman is that concerned, why not just not have sex? But of course, that's unrealistic. So, okay, so what about birth control? The the morning after pill? What about making a nigga wrap it up? What about telling him he got to wrap it up? What about that? You could simply tell him he got to wrap it up. I don't care how much you say, Babe, just let me put the tip in. Just please let me put the tip in. I'm not, it's not going to go that deep. Just let me get like three strokes and then I put on a... You ain't, you ain't got to listen to that. Tell him, tell him motherfucker, no. Put on a condom right now. It's so many steps that women could take to avoid having to get having to get an abortion altogether. They always skip those steps, though. They always get outraged at the thought of my body, my choice. You can't tell me I can't have it. I can't get an abortion. Well, I can because I can make the argument that you could have took so many steps to avoid even getting to this point to begin with. I think that's a pretty valid and logical argument. 
who would be forced to have these children who are already living in very traumatized and scare and scare situations. You want to ask about barriers? That's a barrier right there women in poverty aren't able to access the way that rich women are and no matter what happens rich women are why does she just use rich women what percentage of women are rich women she just compared women in poverty to uh, rich women the percentage of women in poverty are a lot more than rich women and you don't have to be rich to get an abortion as a matter of fact most of the women who get abortions are in poverty Most of the women who get abortions are in poverty. Excuse me. Oh my goodness. Most of the women who get abortions are in poverty. Rich women have they rich women have their babies. Bro. Shitty argument, disabled woman. Shitty argument are gonna keep getting abortions and people in poverty are gonna not. And the choice opening it up, the overruling the women in poverty get abortions. Hello? Black women get the most abortions. Black women are the most impoverished. If you if you look at if you look at the percentage of black women to the amount of black women impoverished, the ratio is 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 significantly greater than any other group. Yet black women still get the most abortions. is marginally affecting people of color, people in poverty, way more than people who are going to get access to those abortions. Actually, anyway. incorrect. You're mis the misquote. There's actually more abortions for people in poverty. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you, Pearl. Thank you, Pearl. I'm glad Pearl came out and corrected that. And there she go with that look again. Then she, she like, I'm so tired of her. She has something to say for everything that I say. And I'm sick of it. She just keeps invalidating my claims. And I'm sick of it. Thank you, Pearl. Th I'm glad Pearl said that. I'm glad Pearl said that. Let's continue. I'm sorry, y'all. I told y'all this was going to be a long video. But I hope y'all are entertained thus far. Because this shit is ridiculous. And I'm doing my best. I'm doing my best to entertain y'all. Because I know it's a long video. So just bear with me. As a matter of fact, it don't even matter. If you want to leave, you can leave. Go ahead. But we having fun. The people who are still watching, we having fun. Thank you, Pearl, though. Let's continue. If you want to be healthier. I don't want to be healthier. I don't want to be healthier, and I don't want no cachava. I don't even know who that is. Sound like a Native American tribe. Why do you think that abortion has been so tied up in this feminism conversation? It's all just social structures set up around bodies. So if... Not all women are able to have babies, but it's about the barriers and value that we give to these specific bodies, right? And so if abortion happens in a woman's body, that's why this conversation is coming up. Can I ask you a question? Sure. You said um, that not all women are able to have babies or pregnancies. Are you saying, meaning like an infertility issue? Oh, and y'all see she didn't have no retort for Pearl uh, stating that that was statistically incorrect what she said about it affecting minority communities of women of color much more than women of other ethnicities she didn't have no retort because she didn't know that was a fact she made an argument regurgitating something else that she heard somebody else say thinking that she's standing up for black women when in reality she doesn't know the research the data and the statistics herself a number of reasons. There's all kinds of reasons that not all women are having babies. Pearl, I saw your hand up. Yeah. Um, I think women want to sleep around and not have any consequence for it. Hell yeah, yeah we do. Yeah! <laughs> yeah, instead of, you know, taking personal accountability and being on birth control, they just want to, like, do whatever they want. <sighs> You say this like it's I a think bad that's thing. Yeah, it almost sounds like you said. <laughs> Can I also ask, do you have any care to empower women, or is disempowering women part of your like steez? You see, this is shame, insult, guilt. Women don't need to be empowered. Empowering is a very stupid concept. Do you know what empowering is? It's a temporary, instantaneous high of motivating and inspiring someone to do something that. When that high dies down, when that high is mitigated, 
they aren't going to think about. They aren't going to want to actually put in the effort to do. You can try your best to empower somebody, uplift somebody, motivate somebody, inspire somebody. If you have to, that means they weren't doing what they needed to do to obtain what it is they're trying to obtain to begin with. And there's no reason to believe why simply empowering them or uplifting them or telling them is going to magically make them do it. need to be right okay i why is it empowering to sleep around no no why what i'm saying is like i feel like you you do like take like the way you speak on women is very sort of like ah women just don't want to do this ah women just don't have this ah, women. uh uh so yeah hold the women accountable the way you speak on women is you hold women accountable for their personal choices the way you speak on women is you make them think about what they could have done differently the way you speak on women is that you make them think about the internal factors that are more significant in their outcomes than the external factors that i want to believe is oppressing women that's what she's saying I just wanted yeah, this, I and I wonder why right. you have so much like hatred towards women. I don't, I don't hate women. Where does that root I'm, in? It's not like women. you do. I am a woman. I am. I, 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 there she is. This this woman this woman is delusional. This woman is delusional. Speaking on observable realities, correcting someone's statistics. Somehow, somehow means you hate women. If you don't agree with women, you hate them. What kind of logic is that? Can someone explain to me how much sense that makes? If you don't agree with women, you hate them. If you hold women accountable, you hate them. If you criticize women, you hate them. If you judge women, you hate them. This is why women struggle. Women are their own problems. Women are their own worst enemies. Women are their own worst enemies. Doesn't mean you don't have self-hate. I can be black and still be inter- exactly. internalized racism. Exactly. Like, yeah, I'm her. saying specific things that you're saying. Like, women don't want to work. Women don't want to this. And, and here she comes. I could be black and it's still be internalized racism. Okay, so she slid that in there. The coon, the Uncle Tom. Speaking on statistical facts that apply to black people and holding black people accountable for the decisions that they make is internalized racism. Y'all have heard me say before and I'll say it again. There's almost no difference between feminists and black activists. They are damn near one and the same. They both feel that they are victims. They both feel that they are oppressed. They both feel that they are the minority. They both feel that the white man and white supremacy is holding them back. They never seem to realize that every day that they get up, they walk out their door. They're not walking out to fire hoses being sprayed on them. Dogs attacking them. They never realize that when they decide to go to the mall, it, it's, it doesn't say no colors allowed. When they go to the water fountain or bathrooms, it doesn't say no colors or no women allowed. They just make this shit up in their heads. You say something to them that they don't like, it's because you hate black people. You say something to a woman that she doesn't like, it's because you hate women. Say something to a woman, it's because you're sexist. Say something to a black person, it's because you're racist. The victim Olympics is 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 not entertaining i'm tired of seeing it y'all do realize that there's a victim olympics going on right now a victimhood olympics women want to sleep Mm. around Mm. where did you learn these uh belief systems from because okay the question was why, why does abortion keep getting brought up? 40% of women that have had abortions have had two or more. 40%. Good for so, so what does that say to me? That means you're using it as a form of birth control. And they don't track the 60%. What kind see, of abortion? Can you let me finish? They don't track the 60% to say who in the future has abortion. So to me, it's like, why are they why are they dying so hard for abortion? They want to sleep around with no consequences, even though you have 41 forms of birth control. Who does that benefit? I don't think that benefits women. I think actually that benefits men. Bing, ding, ding. 
ding, 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 bingo, it benefits men because if men, if men can get free sex and have more of it, and sex is a greater reward for men, but a greater risk for women, then it benefits men. Do y'all understand that promiscuity is evolutionarily advantageous for men, not women? Do y'all, y'all understand that? Promiscuity has more evolutionary advantages for men than it does for women. It has more risks for women than it does for men, which is why men have a more profound desire to be promiscuous, have a, have a, have a more pronounced desire for for, a variety than women do and have a larger preference for multiple sexual partners than women do because we've evolved to desire that because of paternity uncertainty. Women know when the kid is theirs, there's no such thing as maternity uncertainty in nature. So if anything, if, if, if anything, if we're going to make the argument about women's body, their choice and how the patriarchy is oppressive, they're actually benefiting the patriarchy by pushing this bullshit. That benefits the patriarchy. have sex with you without consequence it means that you can sleep with whoever you feel like great but there are consequences because women are the ones who get pregnant and carry babies and give birth it's very these binary are, these are, version of yes sex. because because sex is binary but but please let me finish my point i like her tricking women into thinking that aborting a pregnancy terminating pregnancy is something to be celebrated when in reality for a lot of women especially those who are doing it under duress say that they've been raped or that you know in in this in the small i like her where something i like really her traumatic has happened to them that's a medical decision or or say that they're they're miscarrying and then they have to you know have a, a an assisted termination that's a medical procedure it's not a celebration of oh look at the the idea the the sort of like moral setting of that it needs to be rare is uh, i think the delineation between that's a medical abortion and that's like a fun abortion is really interesting because they're all medical it's all a medical procedure no it's not no matter what you're doing going in there and getting it no it's not it's it's not like oh you're only allowed to it's not a medical procedure being pregnant is not an illness it's not an ailment it's not a handicap It is how we promote population. It is how we populate the earth. It is how we build families. It is how we build generations. It is how we create legacies. It is how we create lineages. There's nothing medicinal about abortions. They are not necessary. They are not required. It's not a form of chemo. It's not a form of surgery. Well, is it a form of surgery? Y'all get the point. It's not a negative thing. It's not an illness that needs to be cured. Two, it's just like, you should just be able to get a medical procedure done when it's something that you need done. We shouldn't be desensitized to taking someone's life. That should never be an empowering factor for a woman. I definitely agree in that, like... Yeah, it shouldn't be, but we're going to operate in reality. It is because the fact of the matter is that the women who get abortions rationalize it as in the form of it's not a child and women are selfish. Women are selfish. Women don't sacrifice for the greater good. That's what men do. If a woman does not need to do something, if it doesn't benefit her, she's not going to do it. Women are selfish. Women are egotistical. They're self-centered. The world revolves around them and their desires. They're solipsistic. There should be no absolute thing any woman should do. There should not be an absolute response to incest or rape or any of these things. Every woman should have the choice of if they want to or not want to carry that child. Can y'all imagine this woman being your wife? Imagine, Imagine the headache you would have just making facetious jokes about political shit or or you know what i'm saying like watching movies that have women being weaker than men just simple things she looked like she would be triggered and cause an argument 
Look at her face. Look how look how mean she looks. This woman looked like she'd been through it. She looks like she's been through it. And I said at the beginning she was she was attractive. She's not bad looking, but I don't know. She looked like she just really been through some shit. And whatever shit she's been through is really taking a toll on her face. I think she's aged 10 years within the context of this conversation alone. At the beginning of the show, she looked younger. She looked more vibrant. And now she just looks like she's slowly turning into a zombie. She's She looks like she's emotionally exhausted. Whether it is having fun, getting raped, incest, whatever it is, it is. I don't glorify and glamorize abortion. I think it's a very traumatic thing. I doubt that if somebody wants has to do, like if they have to do it, they'll do it. I don't think that people are like, you know, um, doing like have six, get the seventh free and having fun with it. Um, and I think that like glamorization and glorification of any side is not okay. Did the Dobbs decision make anybody here uh, sort of rethink abortion, abortion access, reproductive health care? It's anti-woman, right? It's anti, it does not center people to have that voice for themselves and their own decisions, right? It is a barrier, right? It's, <laughs> giving, more, it it's giving more agency to women because it's moving it back to the state level. So locally, but why would the state have locally, the ability the women, to tell me what to do? Because it doesn't have that different power. Areas. If you take out the, the, the viewpoint that life begins at conception, which is a, a really big defining principle for both uh, the pro-life crowd who very, very you know, vehemently believe that, and then obviously a lot of the pro-choice crowd do not believe that. Taking that out of the equation, you do not have just whatever kind of autonomy you want as a person, it's regardless of male or female. You can't just have free run to do whatever the hell you want. That's not how society operates. So at, no point, at no point do I have the right to tell anyone in this room what they should or should not do with their body. But it's, not, what, but it's not yeah, about your body. Like that's, it's, it's that's not about, me respecting that question. It's not, here, it's not about okay, your body. Look. It's about the kid's body. I, I don't care what you do with it's your body. It's my body. It's, right? it's, we're it's, talking it's, about we're my talking body. About, we're talking we're about she does not like Pearl. Y'all see, she does not like Pearl. For me, reinforced how important it is that we approach these issues from a cultural perspective because it reinforces something that I have told uh, many of my colleagues and peers in the past, which is that so long as you lack a cultural consensus, any issue, any issue can become a political football that can be decided by another election. We need we need to take this woman's voice and 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 put it in Joe Biden. We need to extract her voice box and 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 surgically in, install it into Joe Biden. I think he would get so much more respect and reverence as a president just to hear him talk, even with the fact that he's all mentally disassembled cognitively all over the place probably got dementia he if his voice sounded like this it would sound much better in the baby talk that he speaks versus the voice that he has now because this woman has an authoritative ass voice i like her voice we need her to lead us in the battle and all she got to do is give one of them captain america speeches and we good cycle and so long as there is no strong consensus uh, i would expect this to be our reality going forward these extremely vitriolic and aggressive conversations until there's another miraculous consensus that brought about roe v wade but what it more or less reinforced for me is that we're going to have more of these i don't care how dan found focus through thesis i don't care we don't care, Dan. These difficult conversations. I want to talk about transgender issues. Should trans women be included in feminist conversations? How about in women's spaces? Yes, they're women. No, they're not. What's the question? Pearl, trans women name. are women. Um, so I, I want to come at this from the. Somebody need to tell her that having all these positions is not going to get. It's not going to give her her legs back. And I, I know that's inappropriate. But as I told y'all, I'm full of dark humor and facetiousness. But what motivation, what is her intention? Like somebody needs to tell her that she's not being the bigger person. She's not being more virtuous by making these egregious statements. Ugh, man, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let's continue. 
um, position of an athlete. Oh, Jesus. Um, so, so I play semi-pro basketball, semi-pro volleyball. So when it comes to like athletic spaces, I don't think that trans women should be allowed into athletic spaces because I don't think it's a fair, um, I think we, as female athletes, we work so incredibly hard for the little opportunity there is in women's sports. Would this be a like, barrier for like, and it's boring. Let's just throw that out there. They work so hard to believe that they deserve the recognition that men deserve for being a quarter of the athlete that the average man is. And I believe that when men invade those spaces, they although they may bring attention to it, interestingly enough, they're stepping on women's toes. And a true feminist would not want biological men in their athletic spaces taking all their glory and all their shine with a little bit of shine that comes in through the blinds that they have in their athletic spaces. Let's at least, that now that I can agree with, let's at least give women their own niche to excel without the interference of men, i.e., quote-unquote, trans women no barrier there's less opportunity in some industries that's, that's what a barrier is there's less it's not no 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 it's that's based on the market me. okay hold it's based on, on hold on guys okay so again we work very hard for the little opportunity there is in the space because we're not as entertaining as the men sorry we're just not and so it's like you're going to take the little opportunity that we're given and the problem is like it, we can't compete we can't like I, I'm six foot. If I go up against a six foot guy and I play basketball with him, he's gonna body me. And even what if, even if, if I go even up against you? Even even if, even, 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 even if I have years more of training, and so it's like you're taking away the little opportunity that you're body even, we all work so hard for, and you're just giving it back to biological guys. It's like this will be the end of women's sports. Have Eli, you tried confidence? Uh, Eli, hold on, Minnie. Sorry, Eli. confidence can't make me bench what a guy benches. I don't confidence can't make you me guys six, are seven. So I told y'all women make some really stupid arguments. Have you thought about confidence? I mean, do you believe that you can body him back? Do you believe that you can have a 40 inch vert? Because trust me, you can. There's no such thing as biological advantage. Men and women are the same. That's why men can transition into women. And, you know, if you really, really want to, you can do everything that a man can do athletically at the same level. And to say otherwise is misogynistic of you. It's sexist. It's all the above. She's sharing her and experience can in the success. No, she's field. sharing. And I'd have to go. No, she's yeah. not. She's yeah. she's a woman who's had no, an it's experience. Not, it's not, it's not, it's you guys are so obsessed finish. with your own experiences and your own existence, and yet when a woman is sitting here telling you, I feel as though this is unfair and this is compromising and this situation is not helping women, you guys are like, meh, meh, meh. but when you're like, I'm a black person that did this, 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 and this. I really like her. I like her. Eli, I want to give you the chance to respond. Um, so this is basically a joke of a talking point. Everyone has biological advantages in sports. How, how tall are you? Uh, five eleven and a half. I'm yeah, tall. I'm I'm five foot eight. Mm -hmm. I am a trans woman. I you would crush me. You would absolutely yeah. crush Bond me. Density. That's a trans woman. I told y'all. What did I say in the beginning? I said that's a trans woman. They got a trans woman on this panel. I said at the beginning. I said. This is probably somebody who's non-binary, pronouns are probably they, them. I had no idea that this was actually a trans woman. I had no idea this is actually a trans woman. Now I want to see him and Pearl play one-on-one. -on -one. I want to see him and Pearl play one-on-one. -on -one. He's probably on hormones. He probably didn't take estrogen, all kind of stuff. But still, I want to see him and Pearl play one-on-one -on -one just because he said now that he's a trans woman. I, I didn't really even look at him like that. I didn't, I just, you know, on instinct, because as men, we got to know these things. You got to, you got to know when a, when a, 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 a woman look kind of sus, got to be able, you got to have some kind of instinct, some, some, some kind of internal compass that lets you know, no, that's not a woman. Just in case, you know, you get any ideas or you start thinking some things that you may not want to let everybody else know you was thinking about this woman who you're not sure if it's actually a woman. You gotta have some kind of intrinsic, some kind of intuitive, you know, modulator that that 
forces you away from being attracted to that. Wrist strength, yeah. muscle density, you can't switch those. Yeah, exactly, you would crush me. But also, Eli, you would never play at the level that pro plays because um, you would never get there. So let me give you a few more Dang. examples here, too. So Michael Phelps <laughs> produced more lactic acid in his body, which caused him to swim better than any of his competitors. This was widely celebrated, and nobody contested it. Now, this is a performance-enhancing hormone. So we all have different bodies. And now I'm not saying that trans women who aren't on hormones should participate, but they're... Okay, wait. So if, if he's a trans woman, then the woman that I said is looks like the the big green uh, woman on Monsters, Inc. I guess that person could be a trans woman as well. Might not really be a she. There are, I mean, every major, major medical and every major sports organization agrees that trans women who have been on hormones for between one and three years, depending on the organization, have the same competitive abilities. That's that the study that you're referencing had like seven people participated. That is not, by the that way. Is I'm referencing not several different studies. I'm a trans woman and a researcher. It's, it's getting this, personal. This I don't want thing, it though, to be a lot personal. Of us live in this space where you're we're told talking to a whole bunch of women. Right when is it not going to be personal with women? Women don't know how to be objective. <laughs> when When is it not going to be personal with women? Women do nothing but feel attacked. They do nothing but get defensive, especially over general statements that doesn't even apply to them. They'll personalize it and make it apply to them because you hit a nerve. You triggered them. That's female nature. Kind of opinions. And we're constantly shouted over and talked over regardless of what we look like because there's one group in society that basically takes precedence and it's frustrating so yeah of course it's 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 frustrating because when we try to talk about it we get shouted down we get told to be quiet we yo that that woman crazy yo she crazy hostility there for plenty of women. she crazy she just bust out in which you're literally a white woman from australia you live in a bubble and you're pissed see she crazy i told y'all she <laughs> You're literally a white woman in Austin. Yeah, she she bipolar. She bipolar. I would recommend therapy for her. I would recommend therapy for her. The fact that she just bust out in that hysterical laugh and then cut that off and then started snapping. Yeah, she crazy. I, I, I said earlier, can y'all imagine being married to her? This woman would be a headache. This woman would be a headache to be married to. I t I'm very good at assessing people. Y'all, I've been doing this. I've been assessing people since I was little. I'm very good at assessing people, like personality wise, knowing, you know, what percentile they rank in and agreeableness, conscientiousness, openness, extroversion and neuroticism. And this woman is highly neurotic. This, this woman is highly neurotic. I'm trying to tell y'all that voices that have been silenced forever finally can be heard. That's why they have the voice, because they speak up. OK, we're having a conversation about transgender women participating in sports and i wanted to allow more people to participate jordan i wanted to hear from you so i am not that's a strong looking woman too the closest thing i have ever done to anything athletic was i used to do competitive show choir when i i thought she was gonna say she used to do competitive eating that's what i thought she was gonna say she used to do com she used to do competitive eating like hot dog competitions and stuff younger and um I don't feel really qualified to make carte blanche statements about whether or not trans women should compete in every kind of sport. And I understand that that is kind of, that's a hard pill to swallow. And for me, my first inclination is to approach everything through a lens of inclusivity. But at the same time, I also can't speak accurately to every kind of sport and the different things that go into it so i really think in these instances the decisions are best left up to the professional governing bodies that dictate these particular sports i just feel like in places i feel in like places where there's no understanding we can just respect and not really like our opinions don't fucking matter eli i saw you nodding your head over there several times um <laughs> she heated so um Th this is more than about sports. This is about um, free, like, free and equal participation for transgender people in social life. And the right sees this as a socially acceptable way to begin to remove trans people 
from different engagements in our society. So it does just start with sports or bathrooms or locker rooms, something that they find is more acceptable. And then at this point, they start to move into education, getting trans teachers fired, banning trans books. This is a route that um, is very effective because it's seen as more acceptable. Um, but it's also overlooking a lot of major details. Like, I mean, do y'all know how many um, trans women have won national titles? One too many. One. It's, one too it's many. Leah Thomas is the only one. One too many. If, if, if one too many. <laughs> if, if women's sports were actually going to end in some way, um, I mean, it's just not happening. Wouldn't you think there would be more trans women in sports when the majority of states do allow trans women full participation? International titles? Zero. No um, global titles have ever been won by a trans Pick up your mother-in-law for bingo night, automation and tech setup. We do not care, lady. Bingo night. Wait, they're not actually going to do that, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's weird. But seriously, what can't they do? Trans women. I want to move on background. to a different topic. I want to talk about Me Too and sort of this social movement that we've lived through, we're living through right now. What is the state of feminism sort of in this post Me Too era? We're in post Me Too? All right. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me. Um, sorry, I got distracted by the Me Too part. Uh, so I was like, we're in post Me Too? Wow. Like, no one's getting like sexually harassed anymore. Like, <laughs> we did it, guys. World. We solved the problem. Right? We want that world. Um, no, I, I, I think obviously the, the state of feminism is very much reflected right in this room. But Me Too for me, right, in a particular context means something for different people. It's a different experience for different people. In, in my culture and in my community, we're still working through that. There is no post Me Too, right? We're still working through how do we have these tough conversations? How do we teach not just, you know, women, but everyone about consent? What does consent look like? What does that look like in our community? What does that not look like? Right, all those things that I think it's still very complicated. But I think it starts at the level of community, right? Of like, how do we have these conversations around consent? Sydney, I saw your hand up. So uh, when the Me Too thing was unfolding, I was initially like, great, I love the idea of women being able to speak out. What's been really disappointing, I suppose, for me, post Me Too, as, as we're calling it, is that, and especially as someone who's sort of on the right wing of politics, um, I think that a lot of the experiences of women on the right get a bit trivialized because there is a lot of politicizing of sexual assault. So when something legitimately happens on our side of the table and someone tries to speak up about it, there's almost an automatic she eloquent does anybody know this woman does she is she what what is this woman's background educational background she's very good she's very eloquent uh eloquent very articulate i mean women in general are i, I give women that women women's verbal skills are are exceptional relative to men women 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 can articulate themselves very well and women have a lot of basic women have extensive vocabulary. I give women that. Women know how to talk their asses off, but that's because they talk a lot more than men. Disbelief. And I understand why. It's because of the believe all women type of stuff that, that came out of the Me Too movement that a lot of us were like, wait a minute. No, no, people do use these situations for gain. People do make things up. People do lie. But it is sad to watch it happen. It makes me sad that we're here. Jordan? I feel like there'll never be a post Me Too because at the heart of it, Me Too is just a phrase. The spirit of what Me Too represented will always be relevant, and that is that you are empowering individual women to advocate for themselves and speak out when they feel like they're being wrong. Ideally, you are just trying to be the most transparent and self-accountable person you can be, and you need to hit all of those fronts, If again, if you want it to last on a cultural level. How about beauty standards? We, we talked a little bit about this this got brought up at the beginning. How does that tie into femininity? Sorry, I'm very into this idea because I do think it is one of the larger intersections that just doesn't get very discussed, which is like I was talking about before, barriers and friction are placed up around bodies. And the fatter I get, the older I get, the less people will listen to me, the less value. It's not a matter of the less people will listen to you. We'll listen to you. We just won't want to fuck you. The older you get, the fatter you get, the less fuckable you get. It's quite simple.
do I will have for society. So, you know, I'm already starting out as a woman with no legs. If I had something on my face, I have my beauty. That's one of my privileges. I have my whiteness. That's one of my privileges. I used to have thinness and now I'm getting fatter. Things are changing. And I think every single time that we talk about feminism, um, pretty privilege should be discussed because we have these ideas. If you, your skin tone is this, if your hair is this, if your body looks like that, it's about whether or not you are given um, an equal opportunity based on what you look like. I saw a um, I think a lot of times the women that complain about beauty standards don't complain about them when they got privilege when they were young and attractive and thin. So it's like, yeah, you're complaining when the privilege is gone, but privilege is, but privilege is invisible to those who have it. And women, it's, it's a privilege. And men don't turn 18 and get looks that we get. As a black woman, uh, one of the most integral parts of the beauty conversation has become, has been colorism. Um, I'm a dark skinned black woman, proud of it and proud of being myself. Um, for the most part. I hate the idea of colorism. Not to downplay it, I hate the idea of colorism. The reason why I hate the idea of colorism is because if your face is attractive as a woman, your skin complexion, as long as your skin is clear, as long as your skin is clear, complexion is the least significant factor that stops you from being approached from you being desirable. There are plenty of dark skinned women right now. If you go look, especially in the social media age, you can go look. At a lot of these IG models who are dark skinned, look at the following they have, look at the comments that they have, look at the likes that they have, and you will see that they are highly desirable because they are highly attractive. At the end of the day, if your face is symmetrical, you have neotenous features, you have a thin face, a soft voice, seductive eyes, you're attractive regardless of how dark your skin is. And a lot of times what you have is you have unattractive women who happen to be dark skin attributing it to the fact that they're dark skin rather than the fact that they're unattractive. When the reality is you just aren't attractive. You wouldn't be attractive if you were light skin. You wouldn't be attractive if you were white skin. You wouldn't be attractive if you was rice skinned. You just wouldn't be attractive because your facial features, your physiognomy is not attractive. Your shape is not attractive. Your smile is not attractive. Your teeth is not attractive. Your voice is not attractive. All these are significant factors in attraction that must be accounted for when we're discussing if somebody is desirable, if they're physically attractive, especially women. These are the predominant factors that trumps skin complexion. It's not a matter of colorism. It's a matter of if why you think that you're unattractive is actually the right reason or if it's due to the other factors that I just mentioned. It, do you think it's because of your skin complexion and that's what you go with and tell yourself? Or is it actually because of the myriad of factors that I just mentioned? That's the distinction. And a lot of times that's what the co uh, colorism argument is based upon. It's a matter of how facially attractive you are, how your physiognomy is, not your skin complexion. I did not. Well, why am I going to cry about this? Mm -hmm. I did not grow up thinking I was beautiful because I was that. And I think in the black in the black space. See, now I don't know how she looked growing up, but she's not the most desirable in appearance. Her face is round. You know, her face is not her face is not uh, uh, um, shaped. Um, she's not ugly, but she's an average looking woman, in my opinion. She's an average looking woman and she's overweight. Um, we have these conversations, but I think I'm kind of glad I'm glad to bring it up because I think feminists actually really should be part of the colorism topic because colorism is not just shades within being black it shades because they're again the beauty standard is the closer to whiteness you are the more beautiful you are i think it's something that if more people in different shades particularly white women because of that's not the beauty standard the beauty standard is universal the beauty standard is everything that i just mentioned it's more about your face shape it's more about your face shape your waist to hip ratio the curvature of your spine how big your breasts are, 
that's that's those are much more relevant uh variables in attraction than skin complexion it's no european standard of beauty because beauty the standard of beauty is universal you'll find the same standard of beauty across cultures that's the reality and those of you who didn't know that you need to do some damn research and if you didn't know that you probably aren't intelligent enough to understand the research anyway so that's why i'm telling you there's a universal standard of beauty because the same the same factors that make someone someone attractive is found cross culturally it's ubiquitous knowing that standard and we work together on that then we have a lot i think <clears throat> something we can unify on but also something that we can make strides in right now that i'm just not seeing it's only again it's that's why people feel like you have to be a black feminist because it's an it's a topic that only really black feminists are talking about because it deals with being plain and simple yeah, Your I don't care. Can't scale on oh, I don't Your care. I don't care nothing about QuickBooks, lady. Being black. How how do beauty standards make you feel, Morris? Wait, before they answer this question, I'm going to call it now. I'm going to call it now. Let's see if the women who are less attractive on this panel have stronger feelings of disdain towards the beauty standards because they themselves aren't that attractive. Let's see. Let's see. And let's see if there's any variance in the explanation that these women give based on how attractive they are. I mean, kind of what you're saying, um, Antonia, as a black Latina woman in my community, right? Like, I grew up and I was ugly, right? Like, that's what I was considered. I was... I wonder if she grew up overweight. I wonder if she grew up overweight because she's not ugly. I wonder if she grew up overweight because if she grew up overweight, that's what we can attribute that to. This is why I said y'all pay attention to their answers. It's not considered beautiful of oh, feeling ugly, but also being told I was right. Had a lot to do with what is believed in my community, right? Colorism is one of them. And so to say, I'm going to redefine beauty for myself and to say, I own myself and I get to decide what's beautiful, right? And I get to decide what I want to wear and how I want to wear it. And I don't need to, right? It's, it's, it's almost a repelling, right? Like, I'm like, no, you know what? You don't get to decide what's beautiful. The market determines if you're beautiful or not, or if you're beautiful or not. The standard of beauty is the standard of beauty for a reason. I just said it's universal. You can live in your own little bubble and tell yourself whatever you want to tell yourself. But at the end of the day, if you're not being approached by the minute you want, then you may not be as attractive as you think you are. And that's the reality. I am beautiful. I'm going to do what I want to do. And I'm going to feel myself because if no one else is going to feel me, it's on me to feel me, too. I got to say, though, I did grow up being referred to as very beautiful for a woman with a disability. And that, to me, always fed this idea that disability doesn't mean beautiful. I am in some form of exceptionalism, which I then had to keep up with forever. So it's like you can be beautiful I got with a this disability, thought yeah. as I started to age, like you can have no legs, but you better not fucking get fat. And so this idea That's a that good idea. There are certain people who are beautiful and certain people who aren't and that inherently holds back. Cuz let's just put it out there right now. Her the fact that she has no legs will not stop her from getting male attention. We know men, there are plenty of men if she's beautiful enough, they will get in that wheelchair with her and stroke her to fuck out. We know that. We 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 know that. Let's just call it what it is. That's the reality of the situation. We know it value is i think you know find it in yourself yes and jordan beauty standards are toxic bullshit hierarchical nonsense <laughs> and i say what i say why do y'all think she said that beauty standards are toxic hierarchical bs do y'all think she would feel that way if she was attractive do y'all think she would feel that way if she was the right wing woman, the well articulated woman sitting next to her, sitting to the from our vantage point, the left of her? Do y'all think the woman in the jeans, you think if she looked like the woman in the jeans sitting to the to the left of her from our vantage point, you think she would feel that way about beauty standards? I'm here to tell y'all, it's highly improbable that she would. 
But because she looks the way that she does, and she's probably always looked that way, y'all hear how she describes beauty standards. And what did I say right before they started this segment? Let's see if their responses align with how they look, with the uh, more unattractive women having a greater disdain towards the beauty standard than the women who are more attractive and we've seen so far that the three overweight women are not fans of the beauty standards so that is someone who has spent over a year collectively of my life in eating disorder institutions because i have tried to put my body through hellish things to meet these beauty standards which more often than not are not based in reality they're typically trends they're created to push things they're extremely useful for marketing but they don't serve anyone's health they don't serve anyone's self-esteem they only act to try and tell us that there's a allegedly right way to have a body and if you don't occupy that space and have that well actually it's for male appeal because men men are attracted to certain beauty standards and it is based in reality because biologically men couldn't tell which women possessed optimal genes for reproducing and one of the ways in which we were able to tell that was waist to hip ratio bmi those things were indicative of women who had a better chance at bearing offspring that that that's why that is so it's definitely rooted in reality this woman has never heard of evolutionary psychology but it's a thing it's a thing a woman's build is indicative of her genetic fitness body then you're a piece of shit which is absolute nonsense and there are way too many women and men in the world who end up doing terrible things to themselves because they fall into this trap of thinking that you have to be this way and if you aren't this way then there's something inherently wrong at your core which is nonsense you're perfect the way you are that's, right. that's that's literally the core of it you are perfect the way you are and anyone who tries to tell you otherwise is feeding into this industry and is just there I'm here to tell you, if you weigh as much as this woman, you're not perfect the way that you are. You need to go on a diet. You need to go to the you need to go to the pharmacy section of Walmart or CVS. CVS is the pharmacy. You need to go to the pharmacy section of Walmart or Target or whichever store, convenience store has a pharmacy section. And you need to go to the weight loss section and you need to buy some supplements. You need to get your ass in the gym on a treadmill and you need to work out. You're not perfect the way that you are. You're not. You have a heightened risk for heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, and ultimately death. So you're not perfect the way that you are. Don't listen to this woman. Don't let this woman have you in the hospital and the doctors and you telling the doctors I'm perfect the way that I am when they're sitting there telling you that you, you have cardiovascular disease. Don't do it. Don't do it. Shut up, dog. not your friend or looking out for you Layla. oh yeah i was gonna say yeah beauty in the industry is exploitative um but also we have to remember a lot of the beauty standards are based around health what's perceived as health like symmetry um certain weights things like that so there is that side where we have to balance it and i think we're seeing so much more representation which i think is incredibly important well i just think that like if women really cared about beauty standards, like the obesity rate wouldn't be what it is. Let's try to maintain the beauty standards. I don't, I mean, I just think like some people are more attractive, some people are less attractive. And that's just, you know, where, where would I rate myself one to ten? Oh, we're not rating. That's okay. That's what, that's what I mean. Like, I just think like some people. She trying to come at Pearl? She trying to come at Pearl? But what about you? Huh? You're not the prettiest apple on the tree. What about you? She really just tried to come for Pearl. But Pearl maintained a level head. Pearl remained rational. Pearl didn't make it personal. Pearl remained general. She didn't apply it to herself. She's just speaking in general. Way to be logical, Pearl. Way to be stoic, Pearl. Go, Pearl. So if you are overweight, you don't care about beauty standards. Well, is that right? The, like, the point is that the beauty standard is thin, right? Your yeah, standard? Obesity comes from men and women, though. Yeah, you're right. That's true. But I'm saying if women really wanted to fit the beauty standard, they would be thin. 
I know I just from my experience as well as growing up again in a mostly white neighborhood where but I was always comparing myself to literally other people who have a different body type but I wasn't cons I was considered other or to something because it didn't conform to that body type when that same body type became popular to with Kim Kardashian the Kardashians who are different right <laughs> than me let's just say our different skin color right um and there's a lot of animosity i i and a lot of you know black communities of the fact that um when it was on black skin it was an issue but when it was on kim kardashian and the kardashians it was a billion dollar business yep. our time together has almost come to an end we sort of started talking about feminism big picture but we're gonna try again is feminism dead? I think feminism is alive. And I'm thankful to be a participant and believer of it. I would say as far as the West goes, I think that feminism has been cannibalized by other movements like leftism, like transgenderism. So I, I think feminism is very much alive and well. I think it takes different forms depending on who you're talking to, and that's not necessarily a bad thing. And as I've defined in the beginning, for me, I use it as a lens. So I, I don't think I'll ever stop having it in my, my arsenal, if you will. It makes for a good vice panel. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we're done. I appreciate everybody taking the time. I know this is, um, it got a little heated at times, but thank you all for coming. Thank you. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thanks. Yay. Yay. All right, guys. So that was our reaction to it. You guys seen it. I would have to assume that none of the women on this panel was married. It makes sense. The only one who I would think would end up married is likely Pearl and the woman who was on the far left from our vantage point. Those are the only two. Do I think feminism is still alive? Yes, yeah, still alive. It's on life support, or at least it needs to be in my opinion, because it's done nothing but distort what <clears throat> women expect out of reality. They believe things should be that simply aren't and will never be. They can't accept the fact that men and women are biologically different and that a lot of the disparities and differences that we see between men and women are due to personal choices that we make as well as our biological differences. And it's just that simple. I hope you guys enjoyed the stream. I appreciate y'all tuning in. I'll catch y'all on the next dosage of Q-Pill. I'm Suave Q, a.k.a. the Q-Pill, over and out.